This is Flash Somebody at 20% off on this Thursday night. I think it's the last day of January the 31st, 2019. Now, I hope I've done this right. I'm trying this alone without Grimner. And it says I'm streaming on my equipment, so we're going to say hello to the folks out there in Radio Land. It says I'm on here on the reallibertymedia.com chat. So I'll take it until somebody says no, I'll keep going. And tonight, I got a topic, an interesting topic for the for the program. But first things first, I want to say uh, thanks to Grimner for all the help getting me moved over from Windows to Linux. Anyway still don't have it all down pat but I think I'm getting to it I'm getting it I'm doing better every time I try this because uh, change in systems is just day and night anyway so uh, say hello to the real liberty media dot com chatters and chatterettes out there in RLM land we got here we got barman cowboy tech ACT uh, Grimner moose girl Miss Kate Asmo, Chel Sedoni, Chloe, Chloe, Echelon, Graham Z. I haven't heard from Graham Z in a week. I'm starting to wonder about her. Uh, I.B. Don C., <laughs> J. Dredd, Master Brow, Poxified, Poxbone, Rain, Arlen Luke, ah, the bubblers here, Rob Works, Rome's DC in brackets. I think that's Don. Uh, Beetle, hey Beetle, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, Frumpy, Java Doctor, Jays, Nines, Jays out in Scotland, uh, Kozu, Nensen Dubois, and that's me, Perfect Ion. <laughs> and somehow I managed to log in twice, and I, I haven't straightened all that out yet. Uh, Poxahome. Pone Sauce, Sock Puppet, Skittle, Uno, Vinny, <laughs> Vinny Vi Poloni. Uh, I guess that's a Baloney Poloni kind of thing. Yahweh and Phantom. The Phantom's here. Anyway, thanks to uh, people that take take the time to, to do this radio shit. You know, find out what's going on besides what the you know, what the government wants you to believe or know. Because we all, we all find out 20 years later that what we were told was just, a, it was either a fraction of the truth or a mm, bold-faced lie. And either way, it doesn't really matter because uh, we're all getting fed the same bullshit in the long run. Hey, Rob Works is a passing around the bubbler. And Grimner says, we hear you flash. So I've gotten this far without Grimm's aid tonight. Now, I probably won't hold up so well closing the show. <sighs> a little sad. But I'll probably need a... I'll probably do something, but before I'm pause, you know, because before I'm sure, I always go through what I do and make sure I do it as well as I can until I get a routine. And I haven't got a routine on this new system yet. It's, uh, it's like learning to speak Danish. The lips and the shit just don't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. Ah, Mr. Rob Works is firing up the bubbler. And hey, Vinny. Vinny Polnilly. Wait, Vinny Vipoli. I can't read that. That's too many. Too many letters. Man, you couldn't get a short name like me. You know, flash somebody. Three syllables. You got to go all crazy and do six. Anyway. I have a topic. Oh, hold on. Let me get my notebook pad off the desk area where I wrote it. But I didn't bring it to where I was doing the radio at tonight. Things have changed, and I'm rearranging my uh, situation. Moved up to a different computer. So, uh, what was I going to do tonight? Anyway... What we've got here, 
Uh, let me look, 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 look. I'm stalling for just a second. Uh, I wrote this down, and I can't seem to find my particular notes. So you know what I'll do is I'll wing it until I get something that comes back. But I had a, uh, I had an idea for the show, and I can't remember where I wrote it down at. So we're a little disorganized, moving from my normal desk area where I work to this new system setup that I've got, so I could do the radio more comfortably, you know. Uh, I'm getting tired of Windows. God, Windows is just such a intrusive pain in the butt. They want to they want to upgrade and change and do all this crap so that using their software is just like a big intrusion. Anyway, so I found out about Linux. Ooh, it's a little bit more difficult to use than Windows, but definitely worth the effort on uh, as far as I'm concerned. I would recommend it. Grim recommended it to me. And as usual, I'm off to a slow start. I'm hard to teach, you know, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. You know, and Windows is just, it's idiot proof. So even a, even a simpleton can do all the things that we do, all this radio stuff on the Windows, and it's ten times easier. But, uh, <laughs> Not a lot of people have the balls to do this, even even the easy way. And I understand. I mean, it, it's it's one thing to to type shit on a screen, but it's another to to make your voice heard and leave a record behind you for people to go, "Hey, this idiot said that," <laughs> and it happened. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, they're having a conversation on the. Uh, reallibertymedia.com and the thing that I caught was myth this is from Grimm you need someone else to tell you how to run your life well whether it's a myth or not as far as believing it yeah that's the myth part but the reality people have wow they've just submitted you know, to this lifestyle I don't even know what to call this mess we're in anymore. It's beyond ridiculous. Uh, and I, I got a really... Uh, I got a good situation in life, no matter where I've been. I've traveled quite a bit in my lifetime. And everybody's always told me before I left, oh, the this and the that and the scary and the bad and the trouble. And for you know the few times in life where I've ever had any real trouble... It was a matter of mistake, uh, exaggerations, um, people saying things that didn't happen, and exaggerating what did happen. But very rarely in life did uh, nothing exciting really happen. Very simple, easygoing life, just the traveling thing. When I talk to people that didn't travel, they seem kind of, wow, you've done all that. And people that have traveled more weren't even interested. Hitchhiking, who, who'd who want to do that? Well, that was just in my young days when I was a kid. When it was possible to do that, people were nice to each other. Well, crying out loud, the world we're in now, I wouldn't want to travel like that. I don't, I don't think it would be the same. And I remember, uh, like I told a story about going home for uh, Mother's Day one year. And it, because I was away from L.A. when my mom was still in the States, I uh, always visited her on Mother's Day. And it was like a... But the year I was talking about, it was like 3,000 miles away, 2,800, some horrible amount of miles. And nobody thought I was going to make it. I didn't even think I was going to make it. But the driver that picked me up that started the whole thing, he decided that he was going to make sure I got home to see my mom on Mother's Day <laughs> and he did dude. I have no idea what he said to that first driver but each driver got me the next driver they were talking in you know that uh, redneck uh, radio code whatever they said it worked and I made it home in like two and a half days from New Jersey to Los Angeles and it was a uh, wow <laughs> I did everything on the truck except go take a, a pee and uh, 
it was kind of a a memorable trip. I've traveled a lot in my life, but that particular trip and having to do with going to see my mom, and now my mom's gone. So I get a little emotional like an old man will and start reminiscing about all the shit that's gone. And, you know, here we are in this fucking world. It's it's not looking good. And what I read in the Internet uh, sites, and what I see in the videos and links, makes me not want to be on the Internet very much. And when I am, just reading the chitter-chatter from the room is enough sometimes. And then I get bored of that and go do my, something in artistic in the house. But, uh, I don't know, the world's just, uh, it's not doing very well as a collective, I would say, you know, um, but we seem to have these ideas that, uh, we're all divided by land barriers and political beliefs and races, and we all forgot we're, we're people, <laughs> you know? I mean, does a dog know the other dog's a dog? When it barks at it and gets all excited and you know defends its territory or attacks the other dog or sniffs it, whatever the action is, those dogs communicate on some kind of level that we don't, because people rely on lies and deception. Because we go off what we can see or what we can hear, but those things can be manipulated and they have been all our lives. And then stories for crying out loud. Oswald Chat Kennedy, he was the greatest marksman that ever lived. Uh, yeah, you know, even the look on his face when they arrested him, he says, "I didn't, you know, what? What's going on?" He looked more surprised than I did. But I saw the film, and how? What do you think? The guy was convicted in the press. He did it, and took all the attention away. <coughs> Excuse me off the people who really did it. <laughs> and uh, here we are all these years later going, uh, hey, I wonder who did it. It couldn't have been that Oswald fella. I wonder who it was. So, I mean, if I could go through my life, all the years that I did go through it, being told this story through school, all the educators, all the politicians, religions, everybody, everybody and his brother, Oswald Chant Kennedy. It was like a fucking chant. And then when you're an adult, you do a little bit of reading and you find out that the guy couldn't have possibly done it. And that picture that they made of him with a, I don't know, a newspaper, it was all bogus. Government is that we have all of them. The one I, I'm under right now, they're all um, crooks. They're dishonest. They're people that refuse to work for a living, so they go into politics, so they don't have to. So they can live off. It's, they're like welfare, only at a real, you know, better level of life. It seems to me, <coughs> what we call leaders are the very parasitic slobs that are responsible for keeping us in 24-hour day constant stupidity, right? But we have all these fucking toys. We got internet, ooh! I could talk to my grandma on my wristwatch, you know? Uh, my boots light up so I can walk at night and be seen in traffic. Just, you know, it's like giving a, a a dog a treat after it performs and it wags its fucking tail you know it licks your hand and all that shit and that's how I how I see uh, what human life has become and the expressions might not be wagging your tail and licking anybody's hand but you know, we use their electricity you know I'm not excluding myself from any of the shit that I say by the way in case some people don't get it because I got a few folks just a little, you know, upset at me on the reallibertymedia.com chat. Now, I I don't get along with them because I believe their political statements are totally insane. You know, They're more concerned about where, what other people do rather than what they do. And me, not so much. I, personally, on a personal human being level, 
And I don't give a flying fuck what anybody does till it hurts me. Then I care. <sighs> and uh, the people that do good stuff in life, I just return the good that they give. Simple. You're nice to me, I'm nice to you right back. You're a prick to me? <laughs> oh, boy, just wait. I need some practice, you know, because I'm a small guy. People don't take me so serious. So i got to work harder to make my point. And unfortunately, you know, to keep that stupid shit in life going, we get people that are, uh, hmm, oh, what's the right word for it? Contradictory. No matter what the concept is, they either know better or they're, the concept is being mis, mis uh, informed. You don't know what you're talking about. Well, I don't know. I try not to do that to people unless I have absolute fucking proof that what I'm saying, I keep my pie hole shut, you know, because opinions is, you know, it's wonderful, we have opinions, we can all think any damn thing we want, and that's freedom, all this, oh, I'm free, and the government lets me do this, lets me do, no, you're not free then if you think the government lets you do shit, but, <laughs> We, we've we been led around like a bunch of chain chimpanzees with invisible chains. You know, they just made the uh, the box you could play in bigger, so you didn't know you were in a box. And the day, I guess, I realized, hey, you know what? I'm in a box. I, I think I remember it was probably, it could be pinpointed to a particular day. I was hitchhiking in Baja, going to Cabo San Lucas, for, and uh, there's nowhere else to go from except south. You're going to go south, and I was going to go down to the bottom. And it's a pretty long trip. It's about a thousand miles. And I got interesting rides from plenty of people, and one of the uh, most common things was that I didn't speak Espanol. I must be crazy. But I knew enough Spanish to make that sense out of what they're saying. And I just smile at them. What the fuck? What, am I going to learn a whole country's language because I'm hitchhiking through it? And uh, <laughs> I carried that mentality through my whole adult life. I did that when I was young. But I ended up living here in Denmark. And still to this day, even if I attempt to speak speak Danish words they sound like English so it's really not not understood and the few times I've tried it people say huh <laughs> so I just figure it's just easier to, to everybody gets a little bit of English in life right and six million um, Danes they know they're special so complimenting them on the difficulty of speaking their language does never work against me. And it's not a lie and it's not an exaggeration. This language is freaking hard. <laughs> and I'm not one to, to uh, bow down to a challenge, but I don't have the interest to learn how to speak the language. You know? uh, I'm only here because Cirque wants to live here. If it was up to me, I wouldn't. this wouldn't be the place I would, I would choose for me to live. But my wife is from here. You uh, know, the first thing her mom said that I really remember speaking to her, she's really nice too, but she said, uh, promise me that you won't take Sir Kleena to America. And I said, okay. Because <laughs> I didn't really want to go back anyway. I didn't have any plans of, I just, me and Cirque were just like this thing that happened. It was very hard. And we've been together ever since. Every, I'm like almost every day for five years. And uh, I don't know. I'm a roamer. I, well, not now, but in my life, I was a roamer and a rambler. Went a lot of places and did a lot of shit. So for me to, to uh, be married to him at this point in life was the last thing I ever expected. And we're doing good for the people that have seen this thing from the start of it and Miss B down under oh my she's in uh, Australia where it's really hot right now they're having a heat wave and Miss B has been friends of both of me and Cirque since the beginning and uh, we know each other from the World Truth Days and uh, 
Oh, yeah, and Miss Mary's missing, too. I haven't run into her on the RLM lately. If you've seen Miss Mary, or can you let me know? Say, yeah, I've seen Mary or something on the chat box. And I'll, I'll keep an eye on the chat. Because we have this horrible time difference in Denmark. We're uh, seven, eight, nine hours difference, depending on where you're at. You know, six in the East Coast. But uh, I think Mary is seven in... Uh, Hmm. Well, it's hard to connect on, on the, like if she works, things like that come up. It, we miss each other on the internet time. And I thought maybe one of my pals out there might have noticed if they'd seen Miss Mary on the internet lately. Let me know on the RLM chat. I would much appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, I had, oh, wait a minute. Let me look through my notebook here. Because I really thought I had a good topic for the day, and I wrote it down, I showed it to Cirque. And, you know, when I do things, I'm very uh, bad with the eyes. So if I move it two inches to the left, I forget where it was in the first place. And I'm getting old, people. I'm coming up. Oh, yeah, Graham. I, man, my mom said I was two months early. And she said, man, as soon as you could walk, you were gone. <laughs> Uh, there's even a story. I was, uh, when I was real, real little, two years old, my father would take me for walks to the liquor store after he'd come home from work. And we'd walk, and he was, you know, making sure I was growing and build my body was developing. And Well, one day, when he was at work, my mom was watching me. I found eight cents on the table and disappeared. <laughs> and my poor mom was going insane because, I mean, boom, I'm gone. And my father, you know, she calls him at work and he has to come home. It's an emergency and all this drama, drama, fucking drama. And my dad goes right to the liquor store and that's where I'm at. I'm the owner of the liquor store guy. I knew my dad because they did all the trading. And I was sitting around the counter with a candy waiting for my dad to come get me. Now, that's the L.A. I grew up in in the early 1960s. That was like 1961. You know, so things, things in my life have always pretty much fallen on the, the fortunate side of any, any situation. You know. Oh, thank you, Grimmer. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry she had a bad throat, but, I mean, I, I'm used to missing, you know, missing her. Not bumping into her because of her, her farming thing, but to not see her this many days, and I, I looked for a show today and didn't see it. And I figured I'd just ask you, you know, and live because who knows? Typing today, typing wasn't fun. We're not get, the children aren't getting along on the chat room because uh, some people don't want to. Uh, Bend, you know they they think that the only way is their way, and the way that some of us live in our minds, you know, because there's a reality that you live in, but there's a mindset that you carry into it to conduct yourself, and I think a lot of us free thinking, so to speak, people, you know, the I don't know, the less judgmental of other, you know, fuck what other people look like or what color they are or, you know, what all the details are immaterial. What's important is are you being told the truth by the person you're talking to? Yeah. And in the end of the game, I, I don't care about all the other shit. Money and fucking all this other horse shit we've been taught to fight over. Uh, it's an illusion in the first place. It's not even real. <sighs> There is no such thing as wealth. I mean, it's there, and if you agree, but there's a way to get around all that. And I seem to, in my you know, last, say, 10 years since I got out of America, well, I've only been out of America for seven and change, but uh, I think the few years before I actually left, uh, I'd given up driving, uh, what else? And I lived in, the, in kind of like a country-ish kind of town where it wasn't, like two, you know, two blocks was a ways. But <laughs> uh, now, 
it's the same thing and I got a, the same distance to go in a sense but no car and don't want a car and some people don't seem to understand that my wife doesn't mind because she doesn't drive either she couldn't drive a car if I had one so I'd be stuck driving a car and that's the way I feel about it that's the way I felt about it for probably the last 20 years having to drive you know because uh, some people don't have good luck or good skills I don't know they always said I was lucky you're a good driver <laughs> why don't you drive okay I don't have a driver's license oh fuck that you drive good I was never you know because I don't drink and drive and uh, <laughs> smoking doesn't do shit to your driving by the way if anything it slows you down so somebody's got to remind you to do the speed limit <laughs> before you get pulled over for not going fast enough <laughs> Gribner was born a rambling man. Well, you've been in, in uh, New Mexico for, what, 14 years? I was listening to your show the other day. You were talking about doing a garden in the back. First time. But no, when you were younger, I, I know. San Diego makes uh, makes me think of military. And military people usually travel, you know, just that for fun, if nothing else. If they're not being sent somewhere, they're, they're outgoing do shit people I lived in Jacksonville for 10 years <laughs> never a dull moment with the Marines and don't fool yourself those Marines know how to party they's um, they're good people you know they're doing a horrible freaking job and that's what it is to job and they all regret whatever it is they do and it changes them and they're never the same happy go lucky kids they were when they get back home but they're still them to a degree, but there's there's a dullness to them you can kind of see. And I lived there long enough to where uh, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't like seeing people suffer at all. You might not believe that with the way I, I talk and carry on in a chat room, but who was it? Moose was talking about this one night on the on her program with with um, Grimner. The Freaker's Ball. And uh, Moose was trying to explain, you know, that the the character that she does on the radio is just a radio character. It's not the real her. You know, the real her is different than Moose Girl. You know, just like Flash is kind of like part of me, but... Oh, <laughs> sorry, Grip. I told you guys, it's hard for me to read and chatter at the same time, you know. But, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have been. Boy, man, I've seen, uh, I've seen enough of the world to know that we're not being told the truth about a lot of shit. Because everywhere I've ever been, no matter what, and I've been to two other countries that didn't speak English as a, uh, that was not their native tongue. You know, I was in French Canada, where uh, Montreal, and it was freaking French people. Those people did not like to speak English. It bothered them to do it. They were almost insulted that I was even American in there. It wasn't a pleasant stay. I was there for about a month in uh, like 1991 or so. 1991. That early part of the 90s. The hell. Well, I'd have to think. But somewhere in there. But anyhow, but the point of that was more uh, the the treatment of being America, uh, of being an American, and staying in Canada with Canadians, French Canadians, was not popular. Uh, now, could have been the time of year, could have been the people I met. Anything's possible. But <laughs> I keep reading that I wasn't born in Rambler, man. You were, uh, yeah. Man, I've, I've seen enough to know that we're not being told the truth about a lot of things that if we knew the truth about other people from other lands, we wouldn't be a bunch of prejudiced assholes that think of other living beings as enemy. And not that there aren't any. Sure, 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 sure. Because in any corporation, you're going to have your security force. <clears throat> so in any group of people any country I suppose you're going to have people that want to protect it from outsiders 
And the way that America always writes that up is, you know, we're going in to help somebody and, uh, you know, free them, give them some liberation and some industry, you know what I mean? And put them in a fucking debt they can never get out of and do it to them what they've done to all of us forever. Because the good side of figuring out the uh, the tax law thing, well, not figuring it out, but believing that it was true and following up, and hey, let's see where this goes, and finding out what I found out, and living the way I did, showed me that unless you beg the government for some, they don't even know you're there. Unless you come up with some great amount of cash, or whatever have you, they're not interested. They're only in, in interested in, in people that have excess so they can get their cut. And uh, the, the sad part of the rest of it is the working, the, un, the, you know, the minimum, minimum wage working class doesn't even end up paying a damn tax. They get some of it back. Well, hmm, I guess they do pay a tax then, but uh, don't you get income tax, refunds? It's a big gimmick. Um, all this stolen money... <laughs> It's not even real. It's, it's more like credit. It's like a Ponzi scheme. Well, maybe it is a Ponzi scheme. I think it is. Other people, not so much. You know, we all have our opinions about how everything works. But no matter what you think, it still works the way it works. So why can't we agree on an identifying thing? You know, what is it about being alive right now? We're so smart. We know everything. You can't teach me nothing. I've seen it all. <laughs> oh, wow. You know, and I, I don't know. I guess I feel that way with links. You know, because I've seen so much depressing shit since, tw what's it been, uh, 2011 or so, mm. that I'm kind of burnt. You know, I'm burnt on reality away from my reality, the outside world, where I know don't participate. You know, I don't go there anymore. I'm finished traveling. So, you know, as far as you know, going where I willy nilly want. If Cirque wants to go. I'm going. But Cirque don't look like you. It doesn't look like that woman's never leaving Denmark. So, <laughs> and what a place to live too. I mean, it suits me. So, hmm. this could be unfortunate if. Uh, if I wasn't so pleased with my surroundings, you know, like when I lived in Jacksonville, I was pleased with my surroundings. I made the best, and there was a lot of people that did not get along with me because I have an anti-war stance. <laughs> but I lived in a, a neighborhood full of Marines. <laughs> it was hysterical. And uh, they all tolerated me, and I, we didn't discuss it and fight and argue. They just all knew. I had hair down to my back and... You know, smoke dope. What do you think I am? You know, I, what do they call those? The a Mormon? <laughs> I'm a New Age Mormon. We're changing with the times. And their religion sounds like that was written by somebody that was smoking some pretty damn good shit, or maybe mushrooms. Can you imagine? Take some mushrooms and see if you can't write a book like that. <laughs> I think that would help Vinny. Poor Vinny. He's he's got writer's block. I don't are you there, Vinny? You're on the Yeah, there you are. He's saying hi to Cowboy. Hey Cowboy. Uh Vinny should try uh doing some mushrooms and then sit down with a pen and paper and the object isn't to write anything on the paper, it's to not stab yourself in the eye. And the writing will just come. <laughs> Because you'd be high on mushrooms. And it'll piss Hansel off because you'd be a drug addict like me. <laughs> wow, how did we get conned into all this bullshit by the state? You know, Everything that's good for you, and these things have all got a history of. They've been around for thousands of years. They've been used in certain religious practices by tribes of people that weren't civilized by white folk. You know, the European crap. And uh, here we are in this fucking lie-infested ball of shit. And they're trying to cook us or freeze us to death, depending on where you live. Thank you, sir. I'm the dirtiest damn hippie you ever met, son. Anyway. <laughs> 
what a world we're in, huh? But it's just to me, because everybody that knows me here knows I can't speak two words of Danish. They don't attempt it. They don't care. It doesn't fucking matter to them. You know what? What matters in society is is how you uh, how you interact. It's not about the words you use. It's about the you that you show them. Hey, Cowboy Tech is even hanging out on my 20% off podcast talking about pretty much just how I feel about the world tonight because I had a plan and I can't find what I wrote it on. I got a little um, touched before the show and uh, lost my train of thought, moved to paper somewhere and all of a sudden Ah, I found it because I finally found it. You guys ready for this? Tonight's t- uh, show is called "You Can't Handle the Proof." <laughs> I stole that from that <laughs> that Jack Nicholson story. You can't handle the truth, and he's right. They man, boy, that guy set up. That was so perfect. Nobody can handle the truth. I can't handle the truth. Lie to me, baby. I don't want to know the truth. My poor wife, she tries to tell me, Oh, no, this horrible thing happened, and so and so. and Don't tell me that. I don't want to know that. I, I want to have a good life now and be happy all the time, like a, like a bum. <laughs> like a dirty damn hippie, you know. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't want to be worried about thousands of miles away from where I'm at. I'm not going there. And even if I did at this age in life, well, you know, what help are you? You 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 get your years and you learn your 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 trades and your talents and you learn your lessons and then the kids growing up behind you are are too busy living most of them. Not all of them because I was not one of these, but most of the young people they don't no, the old people know to tell them the shortcuts and, and the what's reals and the how to do this and how to do that. So kids grow up more ignorant every generation. I mean, crying out loud, the things my father could do uh, manually that I can't do, more because I was interested in other shit, but he was a hell of a mechanic. You know, he could take a thing apart and remember in his head how to put it all back together again, but the man had it of reading, uh, what do you call it, impairment. He was a slower reader. He wasn't good at it, like me. Brag, brag, brag. I know that sounds bad, but I read well when I want to. <clears throat> you know, wh- whatever I put my attention on, I'm good at it, unless I don't want to do it. And then, Or, yeah, that would be it. If I don't want to do it, it's usually because I think the end result will not be what I want. So, fuck it. I'm too old to be... Uh, <laughs> playing around experimenting with things you know that uh, I don't want to experiment with conversation is one of them but I break because uh, you know I don't want to go on on all these different chat rooms I know the RLM people in the RLM uh, don't rock you know who who, you know who is who you know there's uh, no matter what you think of the other guy at least you know who you're talking to is what I mean there's no surprises and uh, everybody's freaking welcome, even if you're not treated properly. And I'm one to be a rude prick, I know, but it, we're human, you know. And because of the the sources of energy that we get, we're basically flawed. And we're flawed in ways that we don't we don't get taught to recognize at an early enough age to change it in a permanent state. So, uh, my thing is rudeness. You know, I'm not very, I'm not a pleasant, loving kind of. Like Vinny's all nice and everything, except when he's on the radio. Then he's more like me. Or maybe I rubbed off on Vinny, and he he was becoming me on the radio, and it wasn't very. We weren't clicking. So I figured it was time to change. Then I had a few. You know, I got over my little ego trip, whatever the fuck it was, and said, hey, let's try this again. So, Tuesday night, I've got plans, if Vinny comes through, uh, to do In a Perfect World with Vinny and uh, try this thing again. You know, but uh, 
it's called growing, I think, because shit, I've had arguments with Cirque in five years, but we're still together despite the outcome of a disagreement, you know. It's just all a matter of how far are you willing to go to prove you're right to somebody that you really care about. And I'm, I'm not so much concerned about convincing anybody of anything, not even my wife. You know, uh, I feel like this. If Cirque or Vincent or uh, Grimner, Rob Works, you know, the people that you see me associate with openly, Chloe... Hansel, if they want to disagree with me, they can. I don't. I don't have any problem with being disagreed with. Uh, what I have a problem with is the support of the very beast that is engulfing all of us. And there's no way to fight this thing. It's called politics. Oh, I was reading somebody on there ranting about how no matter what politics, politics. You know, no, it's something you have to be taught by another man. You don't grow up and you have political ambitions when you're born. It's drilled into you by somebody else. You know, we're so easily tricked into thinking we're supposed to hate each other. <laughs> and I guess, you know, the way I speak about certain people, you'd think I do. But I don't. It's just so aggravating to... Uh, I don't to deal with close-minded people that can only see what they want to see. Because if I had done that, I would have ended up uh, going to uh, what do you call it, the IRS, and applying for income tax and all that kind of shit to pay it. And but people had, hey, stupid, look at this. <laughs> what you talking about, nigger? Anyway, <laughs> I didn't say that. I said it now. I didn't say it to the guy. I was trying to be funny on 20% off tonight because it's been so serious the last couple months. I think the, uh, sh the, the dark table with Mary bounced me because she's a lot of fun to do radio with. And then me and Mary just clicked that, that comedy kind of crap thing. Worked for me and her. Didn't work with anybody else. But it sure worked with Mary and Mary's not well. Now, so I got her on the back burner thinking about poor Mary because, you know, she's now Farmer Mary and they've had this horrible freaking winter out in America. And I think she got caught up in, it, in the bottom of it, but still in it. And damn, that's that's fucked up. You know, I don't I don't wish ill will on people because I don't get along with them. Uh, I just don't get along with them. Leave me alone. Fuck off. That's not die or anything. <laughs> but uh, to spend my uh, to spend a, I'm just getting bored of the stupid the rhetoric over and over it's boring me so yeah I said easily you lucky bastard you yeah Steve and he knows how to double talk he says anyone is welcome to disagree with me at any time I support your right to be wrong <laughs> You know, and you know, assuming the other guy's a moron, you just beat him at his own game. So, and that's what I mean, Vinny. We live in this freaking world of double talk and bullshit, and it's worked so good it has most people convinced. Uh, away or closer? Am I too loud or too quiet? I got a bendable mic. I might have bent it when I was smoking. Thanks, Rob. Works any little, uh, you know. If I can make this easier for you, I will. You guys put up with it. But it's nice to tell. I, I'm a storyteller. You know? um, and I don't come from a long line of storytellers or any of that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where it comes from. It was just uh, something I've kind of grown into. And then, of course, the life lived. Wow. People were when I would tell stories about, hey, where'd you been the last couple of weeks? And I tell them, and they go, yeah, sure, okay. Well, there, like I remember the first time I told the story about uh, finding walking over that dead body and the cops and all that in uh, Oklahoma City. Oh, that never, hey, you never saw that. You're just talking shit. Uh, and why are you? You know, okay, sure, whatever you want to believe. And that started when I was really young. I learned right away that 
if you have to convince somebody of something, they don't believe you're telling them, well, what's the difference? Why telling them a different way ain't going to change that? And it, it's the way that, that we live, like with court. You know, the court makes a decision, and no matter what the results really are, are you know, uh, whether you're guilty or not, if the if you're if they say you're not guilty, then you're not guilty. They can't try you for the same damn thing again after they just said you were not guilty, or guilty, same thing. So what's the point in the trial? <laughs> you know, it seems to me there's something shady going on just by that. You know, something weird, and I I don't know how to identify it outside of it doesn't fit my logical my logic, the way I was trained to believe things should be. And I lived under a pretty totalitarian dictatorship until I was, you know, the age of reason. And a little taller, so he, he would take me more seriously. Because, uh, you know, people treat kids how they uh, were treated their self. And my poor dad didn't have a, a good good time with his. So... I didn't have a good time with mine. <laughs> the what do you call that? The circle of life, you know. And, and here we are now. And, and when I talk, some people are just so insulted by words or the way that I I assemble the words in just the right way to slap you right in the head. And I, I'll be sitting here with Cirk and I'll say something that I think is just, hey, that was pretty damn good. And nobody will say a fucking word for five or ten minutes afterward. So I went, wow, I shut the whole damn room down with that one. Right to the ego. Right to the ego. Because uh, I think we like to entertain each other. You know, Not everybody, but there's, there's a few people that like to tell jokes. And, you know, have an input. Not necessarily uh, control shit, but be involved in it. I always get accused of being a control freak. And that's probably because uh, I don't really care what anybody thinks. I haven't for so long. It's, uh, I guess it's, it's, a, it's not really that severe. It's more like I don't let what you think control uh, my my life, my real life. You might control my typing for a few minutes, and I might blow a fuse and say something out of anger, but I don't care about it. <laughs> it's so pitiful. Uh, sometimes it, I just laugh at the world because it's it's so fucked up, and it doesn't seem to know that. You know, if you if you wake up in the morning and you go, "Hey, you know what? We're all just fucked up." That's all there is to it. There, there is no reason. <laughs> there is no rhyme. There, there's order to the universe and all that sciencey shit. But when you start getting into human beings and all these, all these divides and, and separations they put us through as people, how the fuck most of us, some of us, don't stay sane. This really drives. I think the societies that we've uh, managed to uh, perfect over what the last 150 years have uh, they've all managed to uh, just be a big ball of shit at the end because they're not designed to work in the first place oh move it away okay huh? sorry I didn't read that until just now he wrote it at 42 am I that loud oh no okay I moved it away so We'll give him another chance. Just yay or nay me there, Mr. Rob Works, and, you know, I'll accommodate. Oh, I know, Grimner, whether you're guilty or not, people have changed, man. That, that didn't used to be the way. And I survived a court thing once where the judge was like that, you know. Hey, no, we're going to go by the law, and the law, blah, 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 and I was not guilty. That's the way you saw it. Went, okay. Because <laughs> he could have had it the other way. It would have worked both ways for him. It didn't matter. He's the judge. What difference does it make to him? I just figure maybe his wife blew him that morning and he was in a good mood because I didn't have to do time in jail for something that was just a circumstance of riding a vehicle. But, you know, the law is the law. And people are all so stubborn about this uh, invisible thing. It's nonsense. They don't do anything. 
I mean, fuck, for the most part, what do they do? Stop people and pull them over for traffic violations. Or they kick in the wrong door and shoot somebody in a mistake in a SWAT raid. I think I read something today. It was like six SWAT teams or something descended on a house. And the thing ended up in no violence and everybody was sad because nobody died. Uh, the end could be wrong, but I think it was today. No, they're not... No, they never say you're you're not guilty or you're guilty, but innocent is beyond reproach. If you were innocent, you wouldn't have set foot in the fucking courtroom in the first place. They they kidnap you, man. This is a this is just a, a racketeering disguised as something else, and the blind that support it have not yet been victim to it. Because there's so many people, 300 million plus. I mean, that's a lot of people to go through before you get exposed for what you truly are. And as history shows us, time after freaking time after freaking time, I mean, the government is always the fucking bad guy. You know, even to the Al Capone thing, right? The guy was vicious, supposedly. He's a vicious, murdering psychopath and... He's got territory and hundreds and hundreds of guys working under him, bad guys with machine guns, this, that, and the other. And you know what they get him on as far as arresting him? Tax evasion. That was They had to make a law that they could prove to prove he did anything because the guy was so away from the physical behavior that they had to get him on something on paper. So with Al Capone, they created the paper crook. And here we are, all these years later, and the paper crooks are robbing us fucking blind. And we sit here and complain about welfare cheats, celebrities, football players that won't stand up through a song. You know, the important stuff. The important stuff in life, well, I wonder what the important stuff in life is. Do you know, does anybody know what the important stuff in life is. I haven't got a clue. Now, I've made my own list of important things, and it's pretty small. Uh, Me, Cirque, Hannah, Dr. Cooper, and anybody I come in physical contact with while I'm outside. And pretty much that's it. (laughs) So, you know, if I can't see you, then, nah. I'm not going to spend my time worrying about it. But, you know, if I look at you every day or every other day I cross your path or whatever have you, well, I'm going to give you the, you know, the decency of recognizing you're alive and not ignoring you in public because this place is so small, that's what it would be. Tables have turned. You know, I had the anonymity of Copenhagen and, you know, Freetown right there to go smoke my brains out any time I please and, all that, and it was wonderful, and it was nice, but, hmm, something was wrong, you know, I felt that, uh, I felt that city thing was getting out of control there, and I know I've mentioned it before, if you've heard the show, but I'm, I'm always hoping maybe I'll catch a new, new listener, some of you might go, hey, I wonder what this shit's about, <laughs> it, it's about everything, and it's about nothing. Maybe it's just a break from uh, your normal, uh, whatever programs that you like to listen to, links or TV shows, whatever, because I do movies and music. I do all kinds of stuff when I'm not sitting paying attention to the to the uh, Internet. Uh, but mm, some people, I don't know. Some, Sometimes their participation seems to lack in connection. (laughs) Let's put it like that. But, hey, I'm a pompous ass that can say this shit on the radio all I like. I know that, well, see, Grimner, um, I agree with you. But when I got connected with Cirque, it changed. It really, that's why I'm still with her. I think it changed everything. There's... I've met people in life that I got along with. That was one thing. But nothing like this. So, hmm. Uh, hmm. 
not so much stuff, but Zerk has her um, her needs and desires and wants that that have nothing to do with me. You know? She wants to be living in her comfortable, you know, home country where she understands and she's comfortable and happy. And me, I've just been fortunate enough to be accepted by the people that are here, and they don't mind me. I don't I don't bother them. They don't bother me. We engage, and uh, things are good. You know? But it took me into a putting somebody else's wants ahead of mine, which I'm not really good with. Never was good with that. I'm a very greedy, selfish kind of guy. You know? I don't want to share my toys with other people. That's why I don't tell them I got anything. Because my experience with people is when you brag about what you got, you find leeches that want something from you. So the poorer I am, <laughs> the better off, because my friends are always 100% my friends. You know, And let's use the, me and Vincent, me and Vinny had a little spat because I lost my temper about something. Okay, well, I dealt with it the way I wanted to, and, and uh, everything just worked out the way it should have, I think. And people fight. That's the. I think that is what we're not taught. I mean, they sh they do all this like boxing and professional wrestling kind of crap, and it takes it takes your mind off that there's a part of you that has violent tendencies. It's just like uh, any other trait you may have. You might be good at bowling. Uh, if you don't nurture it, it dies. And some people, they get a taste of blood at an early age, and they want to fight forever. Me, I, not so much. I didn't really think I, well, no, I might be telling a lie if I say it like that. I think that the turning point of physical violence for me was when I started to think I was enjoying it when it was happening, because I was on top in the fight. I wasn't losing the fight, so... Hey, and I think that that night I gave it some thought, <clears throat> and I realized that if I could have not done what happened at all, I would have felt a lot better than winning a fight. <laughs> Didn't amount to anything. I don't even know to this now to this day. Here I'm uh, talking when I was 16, so a hundred years ago, and I can't remember what started it. I can remember the event, and, but I can't remember the reason behind it. So, you know, I think the lesson in fighting at that point, that young, was, wow, everybody's just hurt. You know, no matter what, even if you win a fight, some people, like, we know we know a guy on RLM that's a, he's a wrestler. He would fight, 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 fight. Me, not, not so much. I don't really enjoy uh, winning. I like winning word fights that some people say that's just as bad <laughs> ah you can't win in this world huh? Eh, Vinny's as snug as a bug in a drug Ugh. oh is there illness going on let me see I'm going to read a little chat here Let's see what Grimm's got up his sleeve uh there are niceties and nasty stuff and normal everyday stuff but none of it really matters in the long run. No, uh, no, no, no. But if, if I think that uh, the the reality behind I got a, a kind partner, you know, a nice partner. She's not like me. She's nice. <laughs> me, not so much. And not like I throw things and scream at her. I'm just I'm a grunter. I'm not a, a honey. What's for breakfast kind of guy. Well, wow, me and Grimner are agreeing, guys. Just, you know, trying to... Hmm. The way I look at life, I've been accused of being cynical. And uh, I thought cynical people always looked at the negative and the bad. I actually take a, a very good look at both sides of a situation before I make a judgment. But once I'm convinced, 
then it's it's like working with a, a court case. Now I made a ruling, motherfucker. What do you want from me? You know, you asked me for a ruling, you got it. Now what do you want? <laughs> Just like a court, <laughs> because you know, sadly, we we are whatever our environment taught us to be, and as you age, I think you come up with the ability. Because I feel I have to. Uh, not take this shit so damn fucking serious. God damn, people are dying out there. It's, you know, right now the biggest thing that's going on is the weather. Good God, extreme weather. I was talking about it at the beginning because I was thinking of Miss B down in the Australia. And, uh, wow, we've got frumpy in Canada and mental pancakes up there. I think it's in Minnesota. We got Moose Girl, Wisconsin. Jeez, just there's a plenty of people on the real liberty media that are living through the uh, you know a cold freaking winter. It's not been uh, this cold in many many years. Cirque was telling me that for right now we're at we're at about 32, 34. It's not that bad. It's it's, it's a mild kind of cold. If, if I like I like the cold. It's not the zero, you know, that that's not my, that's beyond cold. <laughs> Whatever the hell they call that, they should just take, stop that. That's not nice. But, you know, Mother Nature is going to beat science every fucking time. So, you know, we're just getting payback from all this crap these freaking geniuses do behind our back in the name of science. And the results are all around. It's accelerated this, accelerated that. They mess with shit they shouldn't mess with. They take things out of the ground. They don't even know what they're doing. They just say they did. Nobody's done it before. And nobody's been alive 150 years after they started doing it until we are. You know, we're here. And look at these fucking results. And you can't get these idiots to stop their prohibition on cannabis and hemp. Two things that would probably fix the whole fucking world in six months. I'm going to stick to that, because in my lifetime I won't see it. So I'll be like that Martin Luther King fucker and say, I have a dream! <laughs> uh, let's see, somebody's making quotes. Rob works. When one feels no shame in telling a deliberate lie, there is no evil. I tell you, he will not do. I believe it, but uh, it's not like we haven't. You know, I, I think from you know learning the lesson of being young taught me, hey, the fucking truth for one thing is way more entertaining, and two, more more people believe the lie than the truth. I, I've found that I get accused of being a liar more when I tell the truth than I ever was when I was not telling the truth. So, hmm. <sighs> Something's, the scales are out of balance. Uh, the understanding is off. People, man. You know, and I don't know. I don't know what happened yesterday in my own fucking life. So I'm going to read a book about it. You wrote about, about a guy you didn't know and take your word for it. Hmm. So, now with all this technology in life that we have today, the lesson I learned is, wow, it's easy to fuck people with words. Man, you can screw them into holes they can't escape. And they won't even try to get out. They'll stay there. They'll stay in their little screw hole and just, you know, be satisfied that everything's okay. I'm good. No yearning for, t you know, because that's where I'm at. I'm satisfied. I don't care anymore. I told Cirque if the world blows up, I hope she's home from work. If she had to work the, on the day the world blows up, because I want to go with her. I don't want to miss her and have her at work and go without her. That would be a drag. <laughs> that's how I see this this uh, uh, reality that we share. You know, it's it's fun. It's got its good side to it, but it's got a lot of pitfalls that we collectively seem to participate in, and there's ways around it, but you have to give up so much of your ego that, nah, I, I, you know, like cowboy tech, 
or uh, anti. Two of the nicest guys on the RLM. The Grimner too. Grimner has never. I've never seen Grimner say anything that was uh, just a little more than than funny. No nasty insults to anyone ever. Uh, but the rest of us, oh, some of us got a little. Uh, huh, what do you call it? Mm, creative writing in our blood. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go to the chat and see what's going on. I was just enjoying my uh, my chat room because people are so interesting. You know, uh, it's just sad that we use all this brain power to, to shit on each other and uh, support crap that's not good for anybody. But we don't know this. I mean, as a collective, we don't know this. One person has one idea, and the other person has another idea, and this and. And this conflict goes on, and and then the answer you find out 20 years later wasn't even on the list. <laughs> you didn't even you didn't even know you weren't there. You thought you knew what you were talking about, but no, that certain things in in uh, physical life, okay, that you can film them, for example, and you can edit the film however you like to show people whatever you want them to see. And we've been a victim of this, believe it or not, since they figured out how to use their uh, their cameras, and their video equipment, their digital, and all, all this crap that they do. I remember the rumors of subliminal, I can't even say it, subliminal messaging at the movie theater when you're on intermission break. So you go get popcorn. They had subliminally put things into the films so that you'd feel thirsty or want popcorn. And on the intermission, you'd go out there like a good little dog and get your popcorn and your sodas and whatnot. Maybe that wasn't true. Maybe it was true. How do you know? This is where I hit a brick wall, I don't know, maybe a year, year and a half ago. And I started to wonder, well, we're all telling different stories. Mm. I wonder uh, why. We should all know the same thing. We all see the same damn thing. And then five people have five different explanations about exactly the same thing that they saw. So, maybe we're not supposed to uh, live in harmony and get along with each other, maybe this is exactly the results that you get when you fuel us the way you fuel us. This is a direct result of the food we eat, the electricity that we use, the water we drink. That's what I think. Compare me to a, a car engine. You know, if you don't fuel your engine with the right kind of fuel for that specific kind of motor, it's not going to work. It's just life. You know, it's just like a uh, Oh, they've got us convinced they do these, like, body transplant. They can transplant the human heart. They can transplant everything, but not the human brain. They haven't figured that one out yet. So they're just going to create one with a computer. <laughs> now, look at all the shit we can do. So it's really easy to believe science can do anything that they tell you they can do. They go to Mars and what other shit. They, they, they play chess with God on Sunday on Pluto. Mm. Yeah, Vinny, Vinny's talk. I can't say that freaking name. Uh, but Vinny's talking about uh, free peanuts sells beer in a bar. That's right. And see, that's the old way. Is you, you, you know, you use something of a lesser value. You give that away to get your customers to come because they're going to spend fifty times more on drinking than they would have spent on peanuts. You might sell them a bag or two of peanuts, but you're going to sell them a dozen drinks. <laughs> so, <laughs> change. Whoops. <coughs> so, you know, here we are. But things have changed. You know, people uh, with with the, the money system the way it is, everything's debt. We're living on credit. We have for like 100 years. And they took the freedom of money away in increments from eight, uh, 1913 until 71 but still in the meantime 
through that 1913 to 1971 period, the government still owned everything. They just didn't tell the pub. The public didn't know. The John Q. Public, maybe the people that have money know this, but what do they care? They got money. They're in the group, you know. And I'm not talking, you know, comfortable wealth. I'm talking excess wealth. Those people ain't stupid. That's how they get wealthy. And they're not nice, and they're not... I wouldn't want to know them. I've seen pictures of some of these, like Hollywood people. Greasy, slimy slobs, pawing all over the nice-looking young girls. Ooh. Man, if I was... My kid went there, I'd be, like, sick. Say, I didn't raise you to do that, you little brat. Come here, I'll slap you around some, knock some sense into you. (laughs) And that's how I'd react to that. I'd go, wow, my daughter's a complete idiot. But <laughs> most people's opinion is, ooh, they're celebrities, and they got money, and they're famous, and they're this. And and I think they're a bunch of weirdos myself. I like watching their films, but take them seriously is it's kind of stupid. I mean, what you see is not what you're being told. Not on the surface, but you can't really can't really talk about that in public very very easily. People don't really understand that there's so many layers of communication that we are able to absorb, and so few layers we are able to identify <laughs> and understand them. You know, just being alive, being a human being, takes a lot of work to pay attention to as much of the shit around you that is going on. And then there's stuff that's so small you'll never see it. But uh, I don't know how they can measure. I guess they can measure the stuff. There's all kinds of interesting things with like resonance, and vibration. It's where Larry Woods comes in really handy. You know, man knows his shit. You know, that's in my opinion. And I, I found other people that are just as gifted. Aquaponics. That was brilliant. I think I'm going to do that this year. I've been planning to, but I've been so lazy living here. And this man, this place is just comfortable and lazy. But this year, Cirque put some real effort out into the garden last year. So this year, I'm going to I'm going to shoot for the aquaponics, and uh, maybe next month see about that. Uh, what was it called? I've, well, I've got my notes, but uh, I'm going to do a little electrical upgrade around the house and get off we got Wi-Fi still upstairs and I want to get that sorted out little tiny little things but it's we're in the dead of winter and nothing's happening right now even the work that's going on through the city is pretty much uh, the weather's got them they, they got to work when they can not when they want to because of the weather but these Danes are crazy man. they work any weather they get out there and do their shit. They don't complain and whine. They just go to work and get the day over with. And boom. I don't, I don't know. The whole thing is just uh, the society that I live in might be different from any other society on the planet. I don't know. But it's always been improved since we moved here. And I think, wow. The whole world writes all this crap every day on the internet this problem that problem 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 problem. and I get up and I got no problems <laughs> so I must be hanging out with the wrong people maybe Cirque's just not the right influence for me she's keeping me out of trouble and I don't know if I can handle it <laughs> poor Vinny he gets he gets his nut when he hears his name I wish I was like that but I'm not. I I got, I don't know, what do you call it? Higher expectations of other people than saying my name. <laughs> but that's okay. I like to give them shit for it, too, though. So where are we at? In 20% off land. You know, because uh, I think you can't handle the proof. You know, not the truth. I, I think that was just a bunch of shit. Because truth can be manipulated and painted and shown from this angle and that angle. And things look different depending on how you look at them. So, mm, what is truth? Mm. Maybe I'll do one of those word things. Vinny can 
dig into that and get his brain working and write about it. You know, what the fuck is truth and what is proof? I came up with, this is my version of proof. Boy, I like that answer. It's true. It's proof. Right? <laughs> I mean, that's the way I see it. And I'm I'm ahead of the chat, so... <laughs> but that's... <laughs> Oh, they're talking about some ah gold and silver. Hey, somebody took their foot off the throat of silver. It hasn't seen sixteen dollars in a long time. So this is probably you know if you're if you're a silver buyer, you probably should have already got some. But if you don't, if you're planning to do it, it's going to go up. It looks like it's just gonna they're gonna fuck with you. <laughs> I wonder who bought up the, like the billionaires that bought up the most of the silver. And then they got this little bitty pile for the, you know, for the, the small people to play with. We're we're in a game. This is a chess game, and it's it's coming up. <laughs> Something something's gonna go wrong that somebody can't explain away this year. This is my prediction for 2019, folks. Oh, did I? I said hi to everybody. I must have said the date and all that shit. I don't know. I'm hanging in there. I'm doing the best I can. It's kind of laid out here in Denmark. It's 1 and 1 6 in the AM, people. Because, uh, I don't know. I thought I, I do my other stuff when it's comfortable for me. And nobody does Thursday on radio. So I figured I'd try to do something where you guys were available if you wanted to play. You know, because I don't take this too awful serious. This is just my opinion about how I see the world and the components that operate it, and how seriously I'm willing to take this. You know, it's got nothing to do with you. Uh, really, hasn't got anything to do with Cirque either. Cirque and me are just partners in a in a live thing, and uh, the political shit and all the rest of that's just crap. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy to talk that way, but I've talked that way my whole life, and because I talk that way is, I guess, a lot of why I ended up living in Denmark with <laughs> with a Danish woman that understands my my mentality instead of a uh, you know the constant struggle of explaining myself to my fellows back home, because man. I was not a popular with my political beliefs, and still I'm not. I don't ever expect to be. But my political beliefs are very simple. Mind your own fucking business, and I'll mind mine. There's political beliefs, okay? But that's not what it's about. It's really about commerce, and resources, and supplies, and making money, and... Uh, it, it's what are these fucking the, the politicians think they're the fucking Rolling Stones, you know? They they need to be flying around the world and, and entertaining each other with martinis in hand. It's fucking stupid. I don't get what the point. They got fucking Skype. Why the fuck do they travel? They should just meet in a goddamn site room that everybody can log on to and watch them fucking argue. There's translator equipment. <laughs> They use it in the United Nations and EU. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, it just goes to show you. It goes to show me that we're we're just kind of being bent over a table as a collective, and the things that we're taught to accept as you know, normal political business. These fucking pricks should be doing this out of their own goddamn pocket, and then it would slow down to a fucking halt. If they had to pay for the shit themselves, they wouldn't do it. You see that? Madame Pelosi had a freaking attack because she couldn't use a military plane to go to Afghanistan. Ooh, she had to use her own plane. Ooh! Dipping into her $200 million bank. <laughs> How do you take this seriously? The fuck is she? The Speaker of the fucking House. Where does all the money come from? Sound financial investment in a fucking corporation that's been bankrupt since 1933? Come on. I don't, 
I just feel after a while I get like moose and think, Jesus Christ, nobody understands the the, the dynamics behind the story. You know, they believe it. They really believe this shit is true, and that in itself is what makes it true. It's not whether something is true or not. It's whether you believe it is or don't. Ugh. Man down. Uh oh. What's going on? Oh, they're fighting over the ducks. I thought it was me. You guys send me into a, a cardiac arrest. I could lose my sanity and such. Have a meltdown. Right here live on 20% off. Where? Everything is free. Advice, food, water. You know, fuck people. I wonder what broke in us that made us so commercial. You know, we look at each other with dollar signs in our eyes. <laughs> I own, look at my diamond rings. Oh, I'm so sparkly. I look just like a rock. <laughs> you know, or certain color makeup. And wow. As I old, you know, as I as I, as I got older, started to to realize how unimportant the things that in life I was taught were important were. It was like, wow, dad, be kidding me! And uh, here I am. <laughs> so, you know, uh, of course, all you have is my story on the radio to go by, except for mental pancakes. And a Canadian friend of ours, and who else? My brother. Every those three people have actually been here and stayed in our home and associated with us for a period of time. I know that we're alive and we're real. And the rest of you, well, I sometimes circle say something in the background on the radio, or she'll type on the computer circle, you know. Uh, but outside of that, who is she? Who am I? Right. <clears throat> and then there's people like Mary. Me and Mary and Sir go back to uh, a, another site. So we have a history that the three of us have together. But the rest of you don't share that. Pancakes comes from that time. But uh, Vinny doesn't. I met Vinny afterward. And, uh, but still, you know, you <laughs> how you build your electronic relationships and how you spend your time uh, interacting with your friends, you know, and what links that you try to engage people in kind of shows what you are. You know, that's how we, that's our judgment level because that's all we have, what we read. You know, you, if you post a bunch of Fox links, chances are, you know, if you, you're pro-Trump or pro-Hillary or Obama or whatever, chances are, you just go with the odds. There's not much thinking involved. <laughs> and sadly, we've all got our own indoctrinations to deal with, on top of putting up with the indoctrination of some other idiot. <laughs> you know, it never ends. It's just a divide and conquer. And the only unity that I've found is giving up the, the sides and standing alone. And, and then I meet people like Rob Works and Grimner and Vinny. These guys, uh, they don't seem to play. Miss Kate, yeah, I'll read the chat to who's on here. Well, it's a quiet night. I don't draw much of a crowd, but Miss Kate's on here. Uh, we seem to agree for the most part, me and Miss Kate, and she's a, she's probably a, got a different, so to, so to speak, a different lifestyle attitude. Because she's working, and she, you know, she plays the game like Cirque does. It's a different, it's a different mentality. But... I see the, these women as they know better. You know, they know exactly what they're doing. They're not victims of any fucking thing. They're doing what is necessary to stay alive and not live an outlaw life. And I guess you can look at that in two different ways. It just depends on your mood. Well, me, uh, other people not so much. They're pretty. Uh, uh, oh, we did meet at WT. I did, it's been so many years now. I mean, now I'm old. I don't remember. But right at the end, before WT got um, dumped, boy, and I begged Mary for a long time. You guys have no idea. 
how many arguments, well, not arguments, me and Mary never argued. We disagreed. And one of our deep rooted uh, disagreements was about cause from the very beginning after I met her, way before she took over the site from um, Ann. And I was telling her, the guy's something's, you'll see. And little did I know that he was going to attack me for telling her that because he was reading all our personal messages. <laughs> he was good. This guy was, man, he makes Donald Trump look like a peer, but on a smaller, you know, financial scale. But that kind of quality of mis misleading people to think that other people did what you, it, just the opposite of it. Instead of, Trump makes it look like, oh, look at me, dig me, I'm good, I did all this. He didn't do, he hires people to do shit. Well, the other guy actually did the shit and blamed other people for doing it. So, wow, he was clever. <laughs> Jeez. I can giggle about it now, but at the time it was like, hey, I'm doing all this and and uh, I could barely operate the damn equipment I was using, you know, but I was a super hacker. And it kind of fed my bad guy ego, I guess. It was nice to be the uh, the outlaw, the new outlaw. And internet, you know, invisible. Nobody knows anybody, you know, it's just talk, chatter, chatter, you know, bullshit. But it got personal, and the guy was making things and links and memes and whatnot and putting my name to it. And I <laughs> so, you know, it took a, a while for for the, the boil to come to a complete explosion and put a stop to it. But Cirque and Mary did not want to listen to me, and it took like two and a half years for, for them to, to bend and go, okay, you're right. You know, and all these years later, I'll gloat now, but at the time, if I would have brought it up, it would have been totally out of pocket. They would have both been embarrassed. But now, they don't give a fuck, because long, long past. And we've got a great replacement with um, Mr. Grimner himself, folks. He did realliberty.org. And uh, I think right now people are just, wow, they're overwhelmed with the Internet. I think Internet's hit its, uh, it's hitting a peak or something because the traffic to new things isn't very big. And I read a lot about censorship from Twitter and uh, what's that other fucking Facebook. Things like uh, invisible, what do you call it? You can hide people's posts and not let the public know it's even there. So if they look for it, they couldn't find it. Oh, well, yeah. Well, anyway, I was just rereading the thing I just read a minute ago. But, yeah, I was. it's been a long time to me. I mean, five my five years have been married to Cirque. So six years, seven, six, seven. Yeah, because I met Mary right after um, I decided to stay in, in Scotland. That was the set 12. It's right in 12, because I've I seen an ad on Facebook. It goes back to my Facebook days. And it just goes to show how Facebook impressed me. As I seen a little blurb on Facebook, and it said, World Truth, little blah, 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 blah. So I went, eh, okay. Typed it in my browser, and the next thing I know, sign a little thing, do a little type in. Hey, got me. I was, I'm new with the Internet still at this point. But I got onto the world truth and started fighting with people immediately. It was just like a riot without blood. So, <laughs> so I was home. I was where I belonged. And now we've got the reallibertymedia.com chat, too. I like to play in the chat room. But, I don't know. I think I'm evolving. Oh, painful. Man. You know, Well, you know what I mean. Your name's on. Don't be all... Ah, come on, me and my... I always misrepresent the tech world, so give me that much. But, you know, you you did the coding for them or something. I just give you the credit. Fuck it. Who else wants it? Bo and uh, Ant. But, you know, professional guys that are busy doing other things, the Internet to them is just something else on the side. They're, they're probably trying to make money on it. And uh, me, I don't... Ooh. I'll tell you this, folks. If you if this... Uh, take two minutes here. Do a little begging to my little bitty crowd of folks out there that catches the show. Uh, if you got anything that you can afford to send Mr. Grimner's uh, 
RealLibertyMedia.com site. Dig deep and uh, give him a little help with this program. There you go. I probably said it all fucked up, but, you know, just... <laughs> if you can, you can, and if you can't, then come on back and chat. You know, that's what this is about. But some people are more fortunate with finances than others. And in the world I live in, I think that when times are good, you spend it, not hoard it so that you can make more interest on it or invest it in a, you know, fuck, people are so greedy. Gotta, gotta, gotta. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give give, I, I need, I need, I need. I, give me an example. The other day, I'm so used to using the card because cash, and nah, cash is passe here. But there is one one store that's still a holdout on the on the uh, what is it the card? Well, whatever the bank card is, and they they insisted on cash, <clears throat> which isn't a problem. They got a bank machine. Two minutes, boom boom, you're back. But now I've got coins again. I got this handful of change, whatever. And it was like forty five kroners, three coins, and I put them on the table and. I, I told Sir, hey, now you got something to give the bums when when you go to work. <laughs> because I know my wife, if you give her cash, she gives it away. <laughs> so I give her cash so she got something to give away to, to the guy that's sitting there that's begging for coins, for coffee. <laughs> and I, that's the kind of way we are. It's it's just, it's money. It's not real. Don't, don't fall in love with money. If you're going to fall in love with money, you're Wow. There's a two-faced bitch that'll break your nuts. <laughs> Stomp your nuts and walk away laughing. <laughs> and if you're a woman, money will stomp on your nuts, too. Let me tell you, it doesn't care. It's genderless. doesn't care what you are. don't care what color you are, what planet you're from. <laughs> money is a bitch probably the the reason behind why why we get along so badly in life you know commerce is uh, it it's a good thing until you do what's been done to it by the people in in control of it and they got the control through the supposed consent of the people through this voting crap and all the shit behind it now is just a bunch of garbage you know oh yeah you're we're free and Sure, until you hit a, a checkpoint and somebody wants to look in your car for illegal aliens or, I don't know, marijuana or... Because just because you can smoke the shit doesn't mean you can carry a pound in your trunk with you. So, you know, they're going to check your trunk. Make sure that you're not just accidentally breaking the law that they need you to break so they can make the quota. Because what we have now is a business <laughs> trading the damn prison stock on the New York Stock Exchange and other exchanges, I'm sure. But the point is, wow, business, man. We're, this isn't life. This is commerce, trading, and commodities. Who has the biggest house? <laughs> Who has the fastest car? Who's got the biggest boat? You know, the important things in life that matter. You know, so that you can impress that guy but never have to talk to him because, hey, I own a yacht and a mansion. Fuck him. <laughs> and, wow, I would rather, uh, <laughs> I would just rather live the simple life, you know, and uh, <laughs> say hi to the stranger on my way. Not, and not be so uh, so angry all the time, but politics, you know, and all the the trappings that uh, go along with it. If you're pro pot, you're a drug addict. <laughs> this is the shit people say on the internet in 2019. Okay, the stupidity that comes out of some people is beyond the pale. And you wonder, you know, did they flunk a certain, you know, like psychology test to learn how to write that badly, or what? What is going on? But no, there. <laughs> we we live in a world, okay, where 
grown human beings believe fairy tales and carry them into adulthood and wear the little costumes and <laughs> the little shiny badges. <laughs> they call it military and police and all that kind of shit, but... <laughs> You know, like I said the other night on the other show I do, in a perfect world, to me, you got to be one sick mofo to be a cop or be in the military. I can't understand what the appeal to that is at all. That just depresses me. You know, to think that uh, how nice it is to live a, a comfortable life and get along with people, and then there's other people that all they want to do is physically destroy other people's shit so that they can get more shit mm. which hey there brings me to kind of an interesting situation topic is this immigration crap right nobody ever talks about what's the cause of all the immigration why are all these people having to leave Africa and East Asia Where, why does anybody ever speak out loud about why there's millions of people that have to leave where they're from. Mm. Let us ponder, go back in time and think for just a minute, oh yes, I think it's because uh, there's this group of countries <laughs> and uh, they're better than everybody else, right? And they've conspired to take out other countries. So they gave them a really catchy name. They called them the Axis of Evil. Right? I remember from years ago, they put it on TV. They made a list of seven countries they were going to take out in five years. And they almost hit their target. They, I think they hit three out of five. But it was an ambitious looking list. I mean, North Korea was on the list. Uh, Iran... Cuba. Now, they didn't get those three. They got the other four. Uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, what else? Maybe they're after Syria, and I'm counting it wrong. I might have to get a, a, a link to back this one up, because, you know, you guys know me and my repeating memory thing. I'm starting to get old. <laughs> I need to open the link to be absolutely precise. But I think the point I, I was just going for is you know, <laughs> this is a lot of problems to have with all these little countries. Hmm, wonder what it could be. Oh, yeah, they got all that fucking oil the United States wants. Because cannabis and hemp against law. <clears throat> against, are you listening to me? The law. Okay. Why? Are they against the law? Why is hemp against the law? How could anybody in their right mind really sit down and say, if they had an education in plants, well, this strain of cannabis over here gets you high. And this strain of cannabis over here, no, it's hemp. Well, this strain of hemp doesn't do shit like that to you at all. In fact, if anything, if you smoked it, it might make you ill. Hmm. Let's make it illegal so they don't confuse the two. <laughs> I, I mean, what was the motivation to make hemp illegal in the first place? I figured it out. Other folks, not so much. Man. You know, and their support in state and government kind of shows their ignorance of the truth of this situation. Or how little... How, how seriously they don't take it. I couldn't find a way to express that one. I didn't talk that tongue tied me. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, smoke another hit. Hold on. Maybe my brain just needs to, to be kick started so that I can say something entertaining to the real liberty media.com people. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, this is Zero De Niro. Real Liberty Media dot com chat saying oh, hello. <laughs> anyway, oh yeah, hemp isn't any more. Okay, but.
but I think my point is, and I'm trying to make it, is the damage that's been done by using petroleum all these years instead of hemp, it's not irreversible, but they're going to use as little hemp as possible so that it'll slow the thing down because they want to sell this fucking oil to us. They got us hooked. They make everything in the fucking world out of it. Profit, 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 profit. In their little minds, they think they're making money or something. <coughs> and then, according to the politicians, there's this unsustainable debt to the bank or something because these fucking morons borrow the own, the currency they use instead of printing their own. No, no, no. Let's not. Let's bring in a third party. Yeah, we'll deal with Israel. They'll give us a good bargain. You know, what is wrong with people? I don't even get, I don't even think half of them understand that it's not a joke. The joke is not Israel is in control of you. The joke is, is that Israel is in control of you and you don't know it. And if you do know it and you're not against it and you're for it, wow, here we are. This expl did I? What happened now? Uh oh. Did I do something bad on the radio again and lose my voice? Are the people are the people out there not hearing me very good? How's that? Oh, okay. I thought you were um I lost my mute button. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. You want me to mute myself there, Mr. Rob Works? Is he giving me trouble? I have lost my mind on the real liberty media dot com one more time. But uh, I do this the best I can. I'm not very good at computers. I always tell you. I'm pretty honest about that. You know, it'd be nice to sit here and tell you how great I am at it, but hell, every time I come up with a problem I gotta get Grim on here to bail me out. The GIMP hemp brand made by men in masks. Well I don't know, just it's just kind of strikes me as odd, right, that the logic explains, you know, well, maybe not logic isn't a good way to put that, but the reality, the truth, the facts about hemp and cannabis show their self, right? And still today on, on Minds.com, I was so pissed off, uh, <clears throat> I, and this isn't re related to pot, but I was pissed off, I'm changing gears in the middle of a thought. I see this thing about Israel scientists have a a cure to cancer in less than a year. And I went, wow, more bullshit. I mean, what what's wrong with CBD oil and baking soda? What They don't work if you're a Jew? It, see, it's just, uh, yeah, I know that. I, th I thought it, see, what I tried to do is cover it because I, I, don't, I don't know where the mute button is on this. This is Cirque's mic, and I can't figure it out. And she's in bed. You want to go ask her? I'm really sorry about that, but I had to light up. Uh, and yeah, I'll get I'll get a better set. I just haven't got around to it. It's been snowing out here in Denmark, and uh, I don't want to go to the to through the snow for headphones. I will just use these instead. I heard you, Grimner. I know. Rob already thrashed me for it. I, I had the thing covered with my hand. I guess it's a really good mic. <laughs> it got me anyway. Because <laughs> the other one, I could just move out of the way. And you can't even hear me. I used to yell at Mary when my microphone moved away. This one got picks up the cat walking across the room. Anyway, so uh, we live in this make-believe world where uh, what's bad is good and what's good is bad. And there's people in prison for owning or smoking pot. Life sentences for possession, life sentences for habitual, all these crappy, shitty things, right? And all the time that this has gone on with, you know, being arrested for smoking and all the trouble and all that shit, they knew they were lying. I don't, I don't believe that we've been told the truth about anything in the beginning. 
And then when they do have an opportunity to clean it up and say, hey, you know what, look, we lied to you because we wanted to sell rayon. Then you could at least, hey, I got that. I understand. You know, you give the thief the opportunity to admit what they did. It's easier to f forgive that. But we, we've got these lying thieves and seats of power that instead of admitting to a lie, they're going to start another lie. New research indicates, look at what we just found out. And, oh, that irritates me so much. So few people know that. So few people give a shit about that. But, see, the foundation to me is all built on crap. There's nothing noteworthy about it except don't do this. And what I mean by don't do this, tell the fucking truth. Why is it so hard for people to just be honest? You know, uh, the things that are bad for you are, in you know, reality are against the law, and all the things that are good for you are. Wait a minute, did I say that backwards again? Well, my point is, we're doing it all backwards. And if you need permission to do something, why bother to ask for permission? What the fuck is the point of that? Did you, at like, laying your throat down? I mean, wow. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Now, I think Woody, Woody's got himself a medical. But, you know, Woody's in Arizona and living a way different lifestyle than I am. You know, he's in the game. He's accountable to people. He's got a political mind. He thinks politically. Me, not so much. I just think about uh, live and let live to an extreme that most people don't recognize, I think. Uh, you know, I know the idiot doesn't know he's an idiot, but calling him one makes me feel better because at least I recognize it. Other people may be fooled, and uh, sure, because we, you know, we want to be optimistic and hope something's going to change or shift. And I'm not so optimistic. I don't have enough years left in life to wait around for you to not be an idiot, whoever you are. And if that's the way I see you, hmm, wonder why. You know, interpretation, because we're. See, we're pitted against each other through these verbal games on, you know, politics and religion and education, all these titles and the things that we're supposedly free of through this Constitution. It's a bunch of shit because we live that way anyway. There's nobody uses the Ten Amendments they got, and what's left? Oh well, what's left of them? What, what's left of them? I've, uh, I think ten, tents never been used. Governments all over the place. They need to be stopped. But no, the voters like Trump. And if the voters don't like Trump, the voters that got Trump that didn't like Trump should stop fucking complaining. I mean, he's there, and whatever he says he's doing, it got nothing to do with what's going on. You're just being fed a bunch of shit. North Korea. Who gives a fuck about North Korea? Unless you live in North Korea. Everybody in America, because they're going to nuke us. <laughs> We're going to be like on the beach, dude, and the North Koreans are going to like send a big nuke and send us to hell. I don't want that to happen, so nuke them. <laughs> we'll nuke you so you can't nuke us. Whoa, what kind of logic is that? Hmm. Oh, somebody's playing the music. Miss Gate is putting up an unreleased track from J.J. Kale. Oh, yeah, I saw a Clapton and Kale thing today on uh, one of the sites I was bruise, perusing or bruising or perusing. And that's strange that you put put that up on the... Ooh, coincidence. Twilight Zone. do 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 Because Clapton's my favorite guitar player of all time. History. And Keith is my... Also, <laughs> I don't know, it's a toss-up. But, you know, me and Vinny talked about that. He said it didn't matter, but hey, my taste is eh, my taste. Poor people, you know, we're, we're so free 
that we care about what other people think about things that don't matter. Because really, when I, what difference does it make what kind of music um, Rob Works likes to me? What do I give a fuck what he likes? Or what kind of bacon he likes? Or pancakes? Or You know, it's not that you, you mention it. It's that uh, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't affect me if you say so. It doesn't affect me if you don't say so. So where hmm, where's the magic line drawn in communication that makes us angry at each other? You know? Some people take it really seriously. I mean, ah, give a fuck. I'd like to get, I, you know, see, I, I want to care so much. I want to be like Cirque in a way, you know, and love everything. And, but nah, fuck, most of this shit that's in life is just drag. And it's fueled c- with crap, and, you know, it runs badly. And if it was run it at 100%, it wouldn't run the way it runs. It would run better. And it made me wonder, you know, if I'm running on a deficit already, Okay, so I'm not picking up what's happening around me any better than anybody else. So, hmm, what am I not getting because of the deficiencies in, in proper electronics, you know, fed into me? And all this crap, we got Wi-Fi and uh, other things. You know, just uh, nightmare after nightmare. I, I've mentioned it 5,000 times. It gets kind of old. But we all know what they are, you know. Everything. Fluoride in the fucking water to uh, GMOs in the food. And I, I, when I was growing up, I thought science fiction was science fiction. I, I didn't know it was real. I had no fucking idea that the United States of America was experimenting on me like a lab rat. And they have and they, they will. And they always have. Ever since, and all of us, in different ways. Different area, they do a different thing. And some of the things they get caught doing, and they do, and they get caught, and they say, so fucking what? And people say, okay, and they just do something different. Okay, we tried that, now let's try something else. But we won't tell them it's an experiment. We'll tell them it's the news. How many people like that thought right there? Oh, the news ain't bullshit. Oh, yeah, it is. All of it. Every fucking thing you see in here, made up nonsense. And even if it is true, the shit that's true has nothing to do with the person looking at it. It's just to get you on a certain wavelength and put your mind in a place that you'll be angry all the damn time. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating game of cat and mouse. Anyway, I think I'll call it a show with that there bit of knowledge from my vast Ah, mindset. <laughs> I don't know. It's been a weird night. But tonight's show, you can't handle the proof brought to you by a flash coat. You can't handle the proof, you know, because there isn't any proof. We just, we just believe what we each believe. And we're told that we're in a group that also believes it. How many of these people do you personally know that believe what you believe? <sighs> so, well, maybe we'll bring that up on the dork table. Maybe I'll try to uh, get. Hey, Vinny, you want to do a dork table with me Saturday? Uh, give me an answer. I'm going to be closing up the show here. So, if you heard that, feel like answering me on the on the chat. I can read the chat. And uh, with that, I think we're done being entertaining. On 20% off, but uh, the world is the world, folks. It's whatever you want the world to be is what it is. And I think 90% of it is what you just believe. So, uh, how do you how do you gauge or judge or validate or dictate what other people believe? Man, eh, well, maybe me and Vinny can chat about that shit on Saturday. And uh, thanks for hanging in here tonight, folks. Uh, it's always fun to do radio because uh, I like to tell little stories. You know, and this is it entertains me to uh, be able to tell other people some of the things that I've seen and done. 
And I learn a lot of shit from the internet because I've been sent to such good information over the years. So yeah, thanks everybody for all the fucking help that you've been to me. You know, my life has improved since I got on the internet. Uh, probably a hundred percent, maybe two hundred percent. If there's a way to value that, it's just better than I thought it could ever be because I'm comfortable with myself in it. You know. It's not about all of you. It's all about me. There you go. And what we've got coming up, thanks for sh- hanging in to 20% off. Uh, what we got coming up tomorrow, I guess Grammy's, is Grammy off? Uh, oh, wow. I don't. Yeah, hey, Grimner, you're welcome. Uh, uh, I can't read the chat. I'm just trying to read the chat. But I thought about Grammy being sick. I don't know if there's a show or not. I'll tell you the times, and if she's got, if she's not on, it's because she's ill. But Wednesday and and Friday, six o'clock East Coast time, and then Thursday night. I well, no, fr- I'm sorry about that. Friday night is tomorrow. I'm I'm in the middle of the night here. Look, I lost that schedule. <laughs> tomorrow is Friday. Take two. We got uh, Grammy Mary if she's not ill tomorrow at six o'clock on the on the East Coast, and then following after that is Moose Girl and Grimner do the Freakers Ball, and if I think Moose is pretty much snowbound, so she's probably going to be helping Grim with the show this week, and poor Moose is suffering out there in Wisconsin with some pitiful freaking weather, and so is Mary, and so is Frumpy. I mean, there's a lot of people that are, but. I'm partial to the girls when they talk. I pay more attention to the women. Uh, but good luck with the winter. I hope that freaking excessive uh, cold stops soon. You guys got to be feeling that. And uh, Saturday, I come on with the dork table. I'm going to try to get Vinny to come to a dork table. Hey, Kate. Go, come to a dork table with me. Um, and uh, hey, Donna, thank you back. And uh, let's see, Sunday... We have Grimner comes on. I'm, boy, I smoked a lot more than I thought tonight. Sunday, we have Grimner comes on Sunday morning with the blues. And uh, then after that, we do the trivia. Sometimes I play. Sometimes I, I don't know. It just depends. But I try. And it's, wow, there's some smart people on Real Liberty Media. So if, you, if you're here in the show and you think you're a good competitor in trivia online, give it, give it, a world over at RealLibertyMedia.com. It's and sometimes the wrong answers are more more entertaining than the right ones. But then after that, sorry, Grim. Then after that, we got Hal Anthony and Behind the Woodshed from the the west coast of the United States at three o'clock in the afternoon, I believe. I hope I get the time right. I always get always get lost this time of morning. Can't remember what day or time anything is. And Jabba Doctor, hey, everybody appreciated that. I, I had a lot of fun just bullshitting around tonight, talking nonsense. Uh, if you want links, hey, I, I like reading links. I did a, a couple on a dark table one time. I thought it was real entertaining. Uh, sometimes it's just like to come up with whatever's on my mind. So it's amazing that people, you know, that, <laughs> that you guys care. Because uh, it's one person's opinion and Man, we're all different. And then uh, we got me coming back and get. Oh wait, Monday night. Wow, I almost forgot Grimner. <laughs> Stop. We got Grimner coming up seven o'clock on the East Coast with Grim leftovers for all you people. He, he says whatever he couldn't get time to do on the Freakers Ball, that's left over. <laughs> he does it on Monday, and that throws a little commentary in on that stuff. So. It's pretty good. I like it. So far, I think he's done, what, six or seven shows. I can't remember. Six, maybe. But he's just brand new with this. And uh, check it out if you got nothing happening on Monday. And then Tuesday, me and Vinny. I'm going to try to get Vinny to, to come back to in a perfect world and you know, make the circle complete. <laughs> We're going to take the ring to Mordor. <laughs> 
<laughs> grab your fishing pole. We're going to be needing fish to eat. Anyway, um, and then Wednesday we got, if we're, again, if Grammy's not well, or she won't be, but if she is well, she's got a 6 o'clock spot on the reallibertymedia.com. And check out the site. There's all kinds of, there's more activity on here than there is, than one person can do at one time. Just say that you can stay pretty busy on on the site. Uh, thanks a lot, Grimner. Roger Wilco, over and out.